Welcome back to Cinemation Movie Recaps. Today, I show you the movie, The Tomorrow War, from 2021. The wear of spoilers. The film begins 28 years earlier, in December 2022. A biology teacher named James Daniel Forrester applies for a job at the Army Research Laboratory. He is on his way home and has papers, beer bottles, and other things with him. He hands the bottles to his young daughter Muri and tells her to take them to the kitchen. Everyone in his house is busy celebrating because it's almost Christmas and everyone is waiting to watch the World Cup broadcast. He and his wife Emmy discussed applying to the research lab, which is his dream job, while having a Christmas party at their house. Unfortunately, Dan's application is rejected. According to his contact Arthur, he is rejected because they found someone better for the job. Dan is disappointed and vents his anger by smashing a mailbox, scattering his papers, and kicking a trash can. Dan went into the house feeling down and forced himself to sit with his family and visitors watching the World Cup. He sits between his daughter and his wife. He tells his daughter that the players in the World Cup are the best. His daughter replies that she wants to be the best too, just like him in science. He teaches his daughter to motivate herself to be the best. As the World Cup game becomes intense, everyone's attention turned to the television. While the game is being broadcast, a group of soldiers from the year 2051 suddenly appeared in the middle of the field to give a warning about the future. They say that they are from the future and that in the next 11 months, all people in the future will be wiped off the earth. They also call for sending troops into the future to fight the aliens called White Spikes. News reports around the world tell how the government is preparing to fight the White Spikes in the future. Thousands of soldiers are sent to the future full of hope. Unfortunately, after seven days, very few of them survived and were able to return to the present. Because of this, the military is no longer enough to win the war against the aliens, so the government calls on all civilians to help the war effort to save the future. Every week a thousand civilians are sent to war. But just like the soldiers, very few come back alive each week. Therefore, it was concluded that the future world population is estimated to be less than 500,000. Now the world is forced to ask itself if the war is worth fighting for. The next morning Dan goes to his work, but none of his students listen to him. The whole class is very and seems to lose hope. But one of his students named Martin is fascinated and well informed about the ancient volcanoes they discussed in class. Unexpectedly, Dan received a notification to go to the MEPS office, the office in charge of recruiting new troops. Outside the building center, many people protest. Female soldiers question Dan about his records. One man orders him to take off his shirt and to insert his right arm into a machine. The machine can analyze a person's date of death. Dan's death date is set for October 13, 2030, which qualifies him for the future war. A device is then forcibly attached to his arm. He is told that he must not remove it or even attempt to bypass it or tamper with it, or he and his family will face imprisonment. He has 24 hours to prepare for basic training before being sent to fight in the future war. Once drafted, they are expected to participate in the war for seven days before being sent back. Dan went to his wife's workplace. Emmy is a therapist for survivors of the draft. She is shocked and worried about her husband. The number of draft survivors was only 30%. In addition, the draft survivors suffer from such severe trauma that she suggested they run away. The only person who can help them is Dan's estranged father, James Daniel Forrester, a mechanical engineer. Dan asks his father for help in undoing the drawstring on his arm, but a heated argument ensues and the two part with resentment. He says goodbye to Emmy and Muri and goes to join the other conscripts, where they are taught by future soldiers. He meets Charlie, a scientist, and Dorian, a cancer-stricken draftee who is beginning his third tour of duty. During the training, they are taught which body parts to target on their opponents, where the base is located, and how to travel to the future using the jump link, a wormhole device that sends them into the future. After the training, all the draftees spent their free time in one room. Suddenly, 
they are forced to go to the jump link because the last research facility is under attack, and if it falls, the war would be lost, so immediate deployment is required. They have gathered around the wormhole, and it is absorbing them. Many of the dispatch troops are injured when they land in the future. Dan's group landed safely in a swimming pool in Miami Beach. The soldiers from the future make contact with the dispatched fighters. Romeo Command warns them that they will wipe out everything in Miami until there is nothing left. Romeo Command orders Dan's team to find the location of the lab and locate a research team stranded near its location and surrounded by the white spikes. Dan and his team are sent on a search and rescue mission to the research facility. Dan sends two of his teammates, Nora and Cowan, out onto the streets of Miami. On the way to the research facility, the Colonel of Future Soldiers orders Dan's team to inspect the lab. There are dead bodies lying around on the streets, abandoned buildings, burning cars, and spikes everywhere. Everyone is cautious and alert. Many spikes can be seen on the walls. Broken glasses of the laboratory are scattered everywhere in the area. Dan's team scours the facilities, finding them devoid of survivors. Dan is instructed to go to the biomedical freezers to retrieve the biomedical materials and the vials from the other lab and the hard drives in the main office. He succeeds in securing the blue vials. While escaping from the abandoned lab, they came across the white spikes. White spikes are animal-like creatures with two pairs of tentacles that spit out spikes. They are strong and very agile. The neck and abdomen are the body parts to aim at to kill them. Fleeing from the white spikes, Nora and Cowan fall off the railing and Dan tries to save them, but the creatures are getting closer. The colonel sends some jet fighters to wipe out the white spikes and help Dan's team. The explosion causes Dan and his teammates to lose consciousness. Dan and his team regain consciousness in a military base in the Dominican Republic. There, the Colonel of Romeo Command wants to see him and congratulate him. Dan finds out that Romeo Command is his daughter in the future, Colonel Murray Forrester, a military scientist. He and the Colonel go to a camp and discuss the female white spikes. The male white spikes protect the female white spikes so that the race can continue to grow and develop. Miri tells Dan that she has managed to develop a poison that kills the male white spikes, but not the females, which are rarer and more dangerous compared to the males. Miri wants to capture a female white spike alive. She wants Dan to help her catch a female so they can use it as a test subject for a poison that would kill all white spikes. The colonel then reunites with his team and orders Major Greenwood, their lead officer, to assist him. The extraction team including Dan, heads to the nest of the female white spike to capture her alive. On the way to the helicopter, Muri and Dan talk about the draft tape and how the future soldiers claimed he would die in seven years. Dan asks Muri how he died, and she replies, it's better not to talk about it, indicating a lingering bitterness about his death. When they reach the nest, more soldiers die. Muri also merely died in the fight with a female white spike. Dan, under orders to stay with the helicopter, is forced to disobey Colonel Forrester's order to save his daughter. Eventually, they manage to capture the female white spike and send her to Deepswell 9, a laboratory on an oil platform near Port Nelson in the Bahamas, to create the toxin. Muri is furious with Dan for defying her order. She and Dan drive to a beach to escape the white spike attacks. On the beach, Muri reveals to Dan that after not getting the job at the research center, he is unhappy with his life and has left his wife and daughter. She also reveals to Dan that he died in a car accident in 2030. In the lab, Muri is trying to develop a toxin that can kill both male and female white spikes. She has made many attempts before she could create the perfect toxin. The toxin must be brought back to the present because it cannot be mass produced in the future. Therefore, Muri summoned Dan so that he would take the toxin back to the present. Dan has only one day left in the future until he has to return to the present. A horde of white spikes attack Deepswell, Nine, and Muri is badly injured. She sacrifices herself so Dan can get back to the present. Because of the attack, the jump link is destroyed, from which the present world concluded that the future war was lost. 
Dan is heartbroken, as he left the future world knowing that his daughter died there. He can do nothing because he is inevitably sent back to the present. In the present world, he told his wife that he had met the adult version of their daughter, but unfortunately she died, trying to save the poison that can save the whole world. Emmy concludes that the White Spikes have not arrived in 2048, but much earlier. Based on this idea, Dan, his team partner consults Charlie, a doctor of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences, and Martin, Dan's very knowledgeable student from the beginning of the film. They help Dan figure out that the White Spikes appeared on Earth in 946 AD during the Millennium Eruption. They conclude that global warming will help melt the ice caps and cause the White Spikes to emerge from underground. They approach the U.S. Secretary of Defense and ask him to take them to Russia. But the U.S. Secretary of Defense denies their request to use military means. Dan decides to reconcile with his father and ask him for help. Dan leads the mission to Russia with Charlie, Dorian, his father James and Lieutenant Hart, a future soldier. In Russia, the team finds a crashed alien ship buried under a glacier. They consider taking a photo of the find, but decide to end the threat themselves. Dan saws the entrance of the ship. Inside, they see a race of white spikes inside the ship, and there are many of them. The team injects the poisons made by Muri and successfully kills them. However, they wake up the rest of the colony. Dorian, who is terminally ill with cancer and wants to die in his term, sacrifices himself to blow up the ship with C4. All the white spikes are killed except for the female who escaped from the ships. Dan and his father hunt down and kill the female white spike. James is willing to sacrifice himself to save his son from the female white spike. Fortunately, Dan has a souvenir claw and uses it to kill the female white spike. Only Dan, James, and Charlie survived the mission. With the war averted and humanity saved, Dan returned home and is joyfully welcomed by his wife and daughter. Dan introduces his father to his wife and daughter for the first time. He is determined not to leave his family, no matter what, explaining that by saying, my best future, was always right in front of me.